Hello, I'm Greg Sadler. I'm Matthew Sadler's father, and he asked me if I'd record a video for you, his music class, about the banjo that has been in our family for a long time. It belonged to my father, it belongs to me now, and I may be handing it down to Matt if he uh, has an interest in learning how to play it. So, first thing I'll tell you about it is that it's a little bit unusual. Not in that it has five strings, that's, that's pretty normal for most banjos, although you will find some with only four, but it's got a somewhat longer neck. It's not quite as long as a bass guitar, but pretty close. So most banjos that you would normally see, the neck would be about this long, and so it's, it's much smaller like a, a regular guitar. And this one has a different sound in part because of the longer neck, which, which gives it a more sonorous sound to it, and also the smaller drum compared to some other banjos. So this is an open G chord. And let me see if it's actually stayed in tune. More or less. And you notice that there's uh, four strings that play on the frets, and then there's this fifth string right here. That fifth string is what you call a drone string. It's always playing the same note no matter what chord I'm playing. As a matter of fact, if we go here, these are the same notes. Those are the, the drones. So there's a lot of ways that the banjo can be tuned, but the most common tuning uh, has this string and this string, five frets apart from each other, so that's five half steps, right? This is D and then E, F, G. So this is both G. And then we go four steps to the next one. So G, A, G, here we go, G, uh, A, B. It's already lost a little bit of that one. The peg is a little bit loose, so it goes out of tune once in a while. Then this one is three half steps up. So, and then this is five to the drone. So an open G chord, you're playing. The actual chord is G as the first, and then the third, and the fifth, and then the octave, right? And then a low D below. There's all sorts of ways that you can play the banjo. Um, one way is just by strumming it, right? So you might... strum chords, or you might just strum two notes by themselves, right? As in this, this song intro. that I'm playing the solo notes on the other strings as well. So that's another thing that you can do is you could play scales if you wanted to or just play single notes. Um, if you're soloing on a banjo that's, that's typically what you would do. Something I do a lot is picking or quite literally plucking at them and there's a number of ways that you can do that. There are things that are called rolls, so we'll do this on a C chord, and you can see what I'm doing here. You pick with one finger, pick with another finger, pick with the thumb. This is probably the most basic one. Then you can have more complicated ones like this. And you can start improvising once you've been practicing that sort of thing and doing all sorts of other ones as well. So and you can incorporate strumming. There's all sorts of other things that are kind of cool. There's something called claw hammer that I'm not particularly good at it, I haven't done it for a while, but I'll give you a hint about how it sounds, so it's like... So 
So there you have it. There's all sorts of other cool things that you can do with a banjo, but that's, you know, more or less what you're confining yourself to. And if you're going to play the banjo, the first thing that you really need to learn how to do, besides tune it, is um, learn some chords. And the chords have to do with where you're placing your fingers on the fretboard. Most of what I do is actually in this area. I don't get too far up on the fretboard because I don't, I don't need to. Much of what I play isn't actually banjo music. It's guitar music that I just play on the banjo so I can sing it. But you've got your G chord open. You can also play it up here. Or right, here we go. Hear the difference? One octave up. Then you have uh, A. You've got variants like A minor. Hear the difference that just one string makes, one fret. Then you've got B. Oftentimes you're playing B flat or B minor. C. Also played up here. C minor. D. D is a very important chord for the banjo. A lot of songs use it. You got your straight D, you got your D7, and then you got your D minor. And between those three, you've got a lot of stuff covered. Then E is, is uh, it sounds a little interesting on a banjo. Very important guitar chord. There's a straight E, E minor, here's an E7. E seventh minor. F. Oh, actually, that's F sharp. There's F. And F minor. F uh, seventh. Or is that sixth? That's seventh. Um, and when I'm saying like sevenths and sixths and things like that, that's how you would change the chord around to get a somewhat different sound for what you're playing. So, where do we go from there? Uh, back to G, right? So the first song that I learned to play was actually a song that my dad used to sing when I was little. He bought this banjo back, I think, in 1966 or 67 when he was a college student. Uh, folk music was really in back then. He happened to buy a banjo, you know, this Vega thing here, that at the time was kind of common and now it's kind of rare, so this is, this is quite valuable. And he played it, and then when he died, he passed it on to, to us and the family, and I was the one who picked it up. So one of the songs that he would play is called the MTA, and Kingston Trio, I don't think came up with it, but they had kind of the definitive uh, example of it. You can play it strumming, right? But it's a lot more fun if you pick it, so. I notice I did a little bit of strumming there as well, so. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you could have your teacher play it for you, and you could play along or sing along, whatever you want to do. It goes, uh, let me tell you, tell you the story about and it goes on for a number of verses after that as most folk songs do uh, like I said you can easily look it up and sing it if, if, if you want to I'll play another song from somebody who is from your state. Um, I sometimes jokingly call him the Bard of Indiana, and you might recognize it if you know stuff from the 80s. That's starting to ring a bell, then you've probably been listening to some pop or some country stuff. That's the intro to a song called Paper and Fire.
that is probably enough. I see that we're already 10 minutes in, and so I don't want to take up too much of your class time, but glad that Matt asked me to do a little presentation for you, and I hope that you got a taste of what the banjo looks like, sounds like, what you might do with it. Uh, like I said, remember, keep in mind, most banjos that you're going to see, not quite as long as this one. Um, this is kind of a special banjo, so... All right, see you later.